Hi Founder fans, Jason here, and today's founder is Daniel D. Tompkins, a Vice President of the United States of America. So Daniel D. Tompkins was a brilliant young lawyer who at just 30 years old was both elected to the United States House of Representatives and appointed to the New York State Supreme Court. Now Tompkins decided to not accept the position in the House of Representatives and take what was seen at the time and arguably still could be seen as a more important position on the state Supreme Court. He's there for three years and just 33 years old when Tompkins is elected governor of New York State. And he holds this position for over about a decade, at largely due to the fact that he oversees New York through the War of 1812. And we might not always think of it like that, but War of 1812 took place largely in New York. I mean, we were fighting Canada, which is right across the St. Lawrence from New York. And as governor, aka commander-in-chief of the New York State Militia, Daniel D. Tompkins was executing this war to a large degree. Now, James Madison was president and obviously running the show, but for everything happening on New York soil, Tompkins had a huge role in. Additionally, his private fortune he had amassed, he spent almost all of it supporting the, the war efforts, paying soldiers, buying supplies to win this war. He became wildly popular and was able to beat other contenders for the governorship like Rufus King, who had long been an important American revolutionary, and uh, Stephen Van Rensselaer, who is the 10th wealthiest American ever. So you could see him beating these challengers as from a fairly more moderate family background, how important he was. His efforts gained him national fame. And that's why when James Monroe was looking for a running mate to run for president and take over for James Mad Madison, Daniel D. Tompkins seemed like a natural choice. Now, I should note that the Tompkins-Monroe ticket in that first election, uh, they were undefeated. They won essentially unanimously because they ran unopposed. So I hate to take a peg down from George Washington, who's always rightfully credited as being unanimously elected, but... Uh, so was James Madison, often overlooked, and with him, Daniel D. Tompkins. Now, Daniel D. Tompkins is serving through the era of good feelings, so I call him the VP of good feelings over here. However, feelings weren't necessarily so good for Tompkins himself, because, well, there wasn't a whole lot to do as vice president during the era of good feelings, uh, and he didn't care for the job. He actually decides to run for governor of New York. Unfortunately for him, he loses. So what does he do? Well, he sticks around as vice president of the United States. I guess it's not such a bad backup plan, is it? Uh, sadly for Tompkins, he was never able to really recover his money uh, that he had donated to the cause during the War of 1812. He was never refunded it. Uh, he had been working in public life, so therefore he could never really accumulate his own wealth back. Uh, and between that and the extreme disappointment of losing the race for governor of New York, a job he held so long, uh, a job he really thought he could win back because the people of New York cared for him in such a way, uh, sadly, he ends up becoming an alcoholic. And he ends up drinking himself to death. Now, he does make it through his presidency, but he dies just 99 days after he leaves the vice presidency. He has the record for shortest career after being vice president for anyone who survived. A few vice presidents have passed away in the office, but Tompkins made it through his vice presidency and lives just 99 days until he passes away, which is extremely interesting because it, it means he had been an alcoholic for a substantial portion of his vice presidency, helping to run the United States under uh, James Monroe in the era of good feelings. Though in the end, the last few years there, the feelings weren't so good as they were at the beginning. There was also one very interesting note for Tompkins also. Uh, first of all, he is the third vice president from New York State. New York was a swing state during the Revolutionary War. That's why there was such a debate a few decades before this with between the Anti-Federalists and the Federalists. And the Federalist Papers were written in New York because uh, New York could go either way on things. Uh, and additionally, it's why people usually look to a New Yorker as a vice presidential candidate. You know, we have the Virginia dynasty as it's known, Washington, Jefferson, Madison, Monroe, all running in a row there. But we also have the New Yorkers. Uh, we have first L, uh, Aaron Burr, followed by George Clinton, and then Daniel D. Tompkins. And not long after this uh, would be Martin Van Buren. So four of the first eight vice presidents actually come from New York. But what makes Daniel Tompkins so interesting is, well, Aaron Burr famously was vice president when he got in that duel with Alexander Hamilton. And then after, while being vice president, 
Aaron Burr ran and lost to be governor of New York. And here we are, uh, le less than 20 years later, about 15 years later, with Daniel D. Tompkins, another sitting vice president running for governor of New York. The difference, of course, is Aaron Burr was not invited back to the Jefferson administration. He was replaced by former New York governor George Clinton, whose nephew DeWitt Clinton would take over for Daniel Hopkins as governor. Don't you see how it just all ties together? That's what happens when you have a small group of elites running the show. Uh... Uh, but sadly for Daniel D. Tompkins, his, his life does end very shortly thereafter, but he was a hero to many, which is why he so quickly ascended up. He was just 43 years old when he became vice president. He skyrocketed through the political ranks because his work, well, he was already governor, but because his work in the War of 1812, fighting on New York soil, uh, made him a hero to many. So that is the tragic but extremely interesting story of uh, the third vice president. I forgot to note, Daniel D. Tompkins is also the only vice president in all of the 1800s to serve two full terms. Uh, no other vice president until the 19th, till the 20th century would actually serve two entire terms as vice president. They either died or went on to better jobs. As you can see, Daniel Tompkins tried to get a different job. Uh, so that is the extremely interesting, though barely tragic life of Daniel D. Tompkins, the VP of good feelings. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, definitely hit like. If you're new here, subscribe. I put out videos about the American Revolution seven days a week. And I will be back with another founder for you tomorrow.